Excellent! And we successfully recreated the gradiated ND filter. A neutral density filter, also known as an ND filter, acts like sunglasses for your lens. In other words, it limits the amount of light coming into your camera. This filter's primary purpose is to help you create well-exposed photos when the light source is too intense. A gradiated neutral density filter allows you to simply apply the effect on the top or the bottom part of the image. Using a gradiated neutral density filter allows to block the light from the brightest part of the scene, which in most cases will be the sky. This reduces the total range of the scene and allows the camera to capture the entire shot in a single frame. You get a well-exposed sky, a well-exposed foreground and an all-round great image. So let's see how we can replicate this in Affinity Photo. Here is a good example photo. Let me start by duplicating the original and naming it Original. I will hide it for the time being so we can later enable it for comparison. As we are going to replicate a gradiated NT filter, which contains a gradient, we will need a gradient in Affinity Photo to mimic the same effect. We can use a fill layer for this. From the layer menu, I will choose New Fill Layer. Once I have my fill layer, I can enable the gradient tool and create a vertical gradient. The black is on the bottom, but we need it the other way around. We can use the reverse gradient button on the toolbar to swap the beginning and the end colors. The bottom color is white, but I need it to be transparent, just like with the lens filter. We can easily change that by selecting the color node and from the color panel, lower the opacity to zero. The gradient is moving from opaque blank to transparent white. I'm going to use the soft light blend mode in a minute to blend this in. As you know, the neutral gray color has no effect on soft light. So to make it really transparent, I will change the ending color from white to mid gray. Now, as mentioned, I'm going to apply this gradient in soft light blend mode. This simulates the gradient and the filter and we already have a much better sky. When I turn it off, you can clearly see the difference. I do want to protect the whites in the sky and to do that, I'm going to open up the blend options and from the blend ranges, I'm going to modify the underlaying curve so that the highlights are not affected. Excellent and we successfully recreated the gradiated ND filter. Pretty easy, but let's level up and make the sky even stronger. I'm going to make a duplicate of the original and move this above the gradient we just created. When I change the blend mode of this duplicate to divide, notice what we get. Basically, we get the areas which were affected by the gradient in color and everything that is not affected is shown in white. Let's use this information to further enhance the image. I'm going to apply a Merge Visible by right-clicking on the Channels panel and selecting Merge Visible. This will create a new layer with what is shown. I'm not going to need the duplicate of the original again, so I'm going to hide that. When I now change the blend mode of the Merge layer to Multiply, have a look at that, pretty awesome. Look at that beautiful sky. Let's have a closer look at the merged layer. When I click on it with the Option or Alt key pressed in the Channels panel, Affinity Photo will hide all the other layers and show the selected layer. As you notice, we also have quite a bit of information from the lighthouse and the rocks, which will also be darkened when this is applied in Multiply Blend Mode. To fix that, I'm going to use blend ranges again and filter out the shadows from the underlaying layer. This way, the lighthouse and the rock will not be affected that much. Let's do a quick comparison by enabling the top original layer. The after looks definitely much better. However, the lighthouse itself has become a tiny bit darker, which I'm going to fix in a minute. But let's first apply a simple color grade to make the image a tiny bit warmer. I'm going to add a recolor adjustment and select the warm 
but not too saturated orange color. Once I'm happy with the color, I will change the blend mode to vivid light, which will be too much. We need to change the blend options to make a super smooth color blend. First, let's start with the blend range. I want the color grade to apply mainly on the shadows, so let me modify the underlaying blend range. Secondly, the fill percentage is too strong. By moving it to a value around 15%, we get the perfect blend. That looks much more interesting already. If needed, you can reopen the recolor adjustment and modify the color, saturation and lightness to your liking. As promised, I'm going to brighten the darker areas which got affected by our ND process. To do that, I can just add an exposure adjustment and change the blend mode to screen. As you expect, we want this effect to only affect on the darker areas. And again, we open the blend options and change the blend range accordingly. By changing the exposure value, we can control the strength of the effect. Let's do a final comparison. This is how we started. And this is the end result. Pretty amazing. We got a nice blue sky with nice colors in the shadows. Let's move to the next example. A very similar photo where the goal again is to give more contrast to the sky. I'm going to apply the exact same steps. First step was to add a fill layer and apply a gradient. The gradient then should be in soft light blend mode. And if we want to protect the whites, we need to adjust the blend range. Remember that while you have the gradient tool selected, you can change the gradient position to better fit your photo. For example, I can lower the midpoint so more of the top part of the beach is affected. Just as in the previous example, I can make a duplicate of the original and apply this in divide blend mode on top. A quick merge visible with a multiply, which really makes the sky pop out. If needed, a blend range to protect the darker areas not getting too dark. I don't think it is necessary to brighten the darker parts in this image. But if you want, you can apply the exposure trick I showed in the previous example. Here is the before and have a look at the after. Gorgeous. Let's move to the final example for this video, where we will not really apply a gradual NT filter, but the idea is the same. We want to have a stronger sky. This time, I will duplicate the image and apply it on soft light blend mode. This makes the photo already much better. To increase the contrast even further, I can add a curves adjustment. And before making changes, let me also make sure that it is a child of the duplicate, so the changes are only applied to the duplicate. Perfect. Now by adjusting the curves adjustment, the effect of the soft light becomes stronger and we get a nice looking composition. As you already might notice, this also affects the bird. We can either mask the bird out, but in this composition we can apply a circular ND filter. Or a vignette, so that the effect is not applied to the center. To do that, I'm just going to add a rectangle and fill it with a radial gradient. In my case, it was already the last used gradient in this document, but you can modify your gradient type in the toolbar. Make sure the center fill color has an opacity of zero, and I'm going to apply this as a mask for our effect. To do that, I just need to drop this rectangle on top of the layer icon in the layers panel. Awesome, the before and the after. As an extra option, and to wrap up this video, I will add a vibrous adjustment to bring more color to the image, which makes this image super vivid and more alive. I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching.